This is part 7 in our series of lectures on the proofs of theorems on finite sets. And in this lecture we're going to talk about the cardinality of the Cartesian product of two finite sets. Here's the theorem that we're going to prove. We're going to prove that if A and B are two non-empty finite sets, then the Cartesian product is finite, and the cart cardinality of the Cartesian product is the product of the two cardinalities. The key is to begin by proving a special case of the theorem, namely the case where A and B are specifically n sub m and n sub n for some natural numbers m and n. In that case, the theorem says that n sub m cross n sub n has the same cardinality as n sub m n. In other words, the cardinality of it is m times n. Now, there are various ways to prove it. One way is to produce an explicit bijection uh, between these two sets. And it turns out that you can prove that this particular function here is, in fact, a bijection. But uh, that takes a few pages of work to verify all of the details. You first have to prove that it really is a function from this set to this set, and then you have to prove that it's an injection and that it's a surjection. And that actually takes a few pages of work to do. And furthermore, uh, it's not so intuitively obvious where I came up with uh, this particular choice. But I have a better way uh, to prove the theorem. I'm going to make use of the theorem on cardinality of finite disjoint unions of finite sets. So what we have to do is we have to see if we can write n sub m cross n sub n as a disjoint union of sets all having exactly the same cardinalities. So let me draw a picture for you to show um, how it works. So I want to make a picture of um, a particular example of n sub m cross n sub n. So this is actually n sub 4 cross n sub 3. That's what these dots are, n sub 4 cross n sub 3. And if you look at the columns of it, the four columns, you realize that together they give you a disjoint union of n sub 4 cross n sub 3, and they all have the same cardinality, namely 3. And so um, we know from our theorem on the cardinality of disjoint unions of finite sets that the total cardinality must be 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, uh, which is 12. So that's the idea of the proof. Um, the idea is to write n sub 4 cross n sub 3 as a union of these sets. Now what are these sets? Well, this one over here is just simply 1 cross n sub 3. Right? This one here is singleton 4 cross n sub 3. Okay, so it's actually quite simple to write each of these down, and their union is going to give us n sub 4 cross n sub 3, and, and that's the idea of the proof in general. So let's now return and supply the details. So here's the proof of the lemma. We rewrite n sub m cross n sub n in this way. So this is what was suggested by the picture that I drew on the previous slide. Oh, and I have to apologize. I forgot to put the superscript here. It should be the union as i runs from 1 up to m. Okay, so it's, it's very easy to prove that these two sets are equal. Now observe that it's a disjoint union, and it's because if, if you take uh, two different sets in this union, their first components will differ, and therefore it's impossible um, just by the definition of equality of ordered pairs for one element to have two different first components. Um, therefore it's a disjoint union, and for each i in n sub m, in other words for each um, term in this union, I claim that it has a cardinality of n. 
Um, and that's because it's really very easy to explicitly write down a bijection from n sub n into this set here. So I'll leave it for you as an exercise to write down that explicit bijection. So every set in this disjoint union has exactly cardinality n, and now we apply our theorem on cardinality of finite disjoint unions to get that the, the cardinality of this is the sum of these cardinalities. Each of those is n, that's a constant, so we're adding up as i runs from 1 to m, um, in other words, m copies of this constant n, and that means it's just simply m times n. And so that completes the proof. And now it's easy to complete the proof of the theorem. If a and b are any two non-empty finite sets, then there must exist natural numbers m and n, such that a has the same cardinality as n sub m, and b has the same cardinality as n sub n. Then it's an exercise that we did a long time ago in class that the corresponding Cartesian products have the same cardinality. But we know that this has the same cardinality as n sub m n. That's the one that we just proved on the previous slide. And therefore the cardinality of a cross b is m times n, which is the product of the cardinality of a with the cardinality of b. And that completes the proof.